Hi, I'm Dave Buggy. Please join me on a five-year journey to fundraise, plan, and then over the course of three days, place with heavy lift helicopters 370 large logs along a combined stream reach of more than five miles in what is arguably the Clackamas River Basin's most geographically expansive and complex fish habitat restoration project. Strong community support and assistance coupled with multiple funding sources and diverse agency involvement made this $1.6 million project happen within the North Fork Eagle and Bear Creeks. Let's zoom in to see where this project is located, which is between the towns of Estacada and Sandy. Note the locations of the principal creeks. Bear Creek flows into the North Fork Eagle Creek, which flows into Eagle Creek. The North Fork Eagle and Bear Creeks are the two foci of this project. Before diving into the exciting action, it's worthwhile to learn a little more about the project's setting. Now, let's zoom out a little to see where this project is situated within the Clackamas River Basin. The Eagle Creek watershed is part of the lower Clackamas River Basin and historically was one of its most productive watersheds for salmon and steelhead, but that's dwindled significantly over the years, primarily due to habitat loss. Zooming in again, we can see that this project is just one of a number that have been recently completed within the Eagle Creek watershed, but is by far the largest in both cost and geographic reach. This project's reaches are denoted with the thick blue lines. This LIDAR image shows the canyon-like nature of both creeks, particularly Bear Creek. The North Fork Eagle, however, does have several floodplains or wider areas that we will capitalize on to recreate historical habitat. These upstream and downstream aerial views are reflective of the steep topography and heavily forested terrain along much of the North Fork Eagle Creek. Some pertinent statistics about the North Fork Eagle Creek. The creek's gradient, or slope, is just right for this type of project, not too steep. The Eagle Creek watershed possesses 45.3 miles of combined high intrinsic potential, which is a measure of a stream's capacity to provide high quality fish habitat based upon topography and stream flow and is the greatest amount within the entire Clackamas River Basin. The North Fork subwatershed contributes over 50% to that potential, which makes this project very worthwhile. This site plan shows how the project was partitioned to minimize helicopter travel time. Five log staging areas, each circled in red, were created on both public and private land over a flight length of about three miles. This arrangement also allowed the helicopters to safely fly without crossing any public roads or power lines. This drawing, representing one of the project's five sectors, shows where each log structure is located. Each jam site was flagged and then geolocated, with the coordinates placed on these drawings. The majority are lateral deflection jams, which are jams where most of each log is on the stream bank to allow stream flow to pass by in high waters, in this case along the left bank, and to more reliably restrain the logs from downstream movement. Note how a sufficient distance is left between jams to recruit wood, gravels, and cobbles into and upstream of the jams during high waters. A few log jams are emulating what are known as apex jams, which are more or less centered in the creek, but most of the key logs are oriented more parallel or at a slight angle relative to the stream flow to allow water to flow around them. The primary limiting factor in both creeks is the lack of suitable aquatic physical habitat. Fish, when rearing, require large wood to seek cover within, and the wood is home to some of the insects the fish eat. The wood also retains vital creek gravels of various sizes as they move downstream in high waters, which is necessary for the adult fish to build their nests or reds for spawning. Prior to this project, there was very little wood in the creek due to the past logging practices and the misguided notion that all wood should be removed to allow salmon to pass. The water quality is very good. Stressors from urban development are very low. There are no man-made barriers to fish passage within the North Fork Eagle Creek watershed to the Pacific Ocean. Therefore, lack of appropriate physical habitat is the only freshwater limiting factor keeping salmonids from successfully rebuilding their populations. During an adult salmon's journey up Eagle Creek, the only partial barrier they encounter on their way into the North Fork Eagle Creek watershed is this seven foot six inch high stepped waterfall known as the Lower Falls and located downstream of Eagle Fern Park. Throughout the low flow months of September and early October, when this video was taken, a larger salmon, the Spring Chinook, must negotiate these falls as they've done for millennia. During the higher winter and early spring flows, as shown here, 
the smaller coho salmon and winter steelhead make their attempts. Despite most adult salmonids being able to jump up the falls, in 1957, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service built a reinforced concrete fish ladder on the left side to improve those odds. Today, salmon and steelhead are observed taking both the ladder and, for the gutsier ones, jumping up the falls. Once salmonids negotiate the lower falls, it's only a short swim to where the North Fork Eagle Creek flows into Eagle Creek. After an easy left turn, they're able to freely migrate upstream to access the main stem of the North Fork and all five principal creeks that feed into it. Along Bear Creek, an impassable 13-foot stepped waterfall with no plunge pool exists upstream of the project area, which is why no additional log jams within this creek were considered. In this map produced by Portland State University, stream temperatures are cooler in the Eagle Creek watershed than in others within the lower Clackamas River Basin. And this trend is expected to continue into the future as the climate changes. This is good for salmonids during the hot summer months and helps to make this project a good investment. Most of the logs were obtained from property administered by the Bureau of Land Management located south of Estacada. The stand of trees was burned during the 2020 Riverside fire. The severity of the burn was enough to eventually kill the trees and blacken the bark, but the wood is in very good shape. Saw logs were cut at the stump and logs with root wads were excavated around the base to sever the roots and then tipped with a track hoe. Some logs were so large that only one could fit on a log truck. Logs also came from the Fons family as in-kind contributions. Freshwater mussel surveys were performed by the Clackamas River Basin Council with an underwater scope prior to placing the large wood to verify that no mussel beds would be harmed. Signs were placed around the community to make folks aware the project would be happening and to not confuse all the helicopter work with any wildfire suppression needs. For coordination, a pre-construction meeting was held. Because of the overall stream length of the project, two teams were assembled to work down in the creek. This panorama shows the log layout in one of the staging areas at a private residence. The open area in the background is the helicopter landing and servicing area. Note the fuel tanker truck. This family generously turned one of their fields over to the project team for most of the summer. This was truly a community effort. During the first two days, the smaller Vertol helicopter is used with a payload capacity of about 9,500 pounds. The choker setter has attached the choker cable to lift the log with a root wad. The suspended cable has a fixture at the bottom of it that allows the pilot to disconnect any number of choker cables from the main suspension cable, which is 250 feet long. The Vertol helicopter then flies into the North Fork Eagle Creek Canyon and begins to lower the log down onto the creek bed or on top of other logs already present. This view from creek level shows the helicopter lowering and releasing the log on top of previous logs delivered. Key logs within each log jam for the North Fork Eagle are a minimum of 60 feet long and 22 inches in diameter and 40 foot long by 18 inches in diameter for the much smaller Bear Creek. Key logs and gauge trees along the bank or on the adjacent uplands were practicable to enhance their resistance to downstream movement. A minimum of eight logs are used in each log jam. On average, each turn or helicopter log delivery and return cycle lasts only about five minutes. Time is of the essence as the Fertal cost about $8,000 per hour and the Chinook about $15,000 per hour. Helicopters are required for this project as there is no road access into this area. Choker cables are coiled and bundled. Bills, what yeah. do you think of this helicopter work, man? It's sick. Yeah? It's important. It's cool. Oh boy. For the fish. How do you like those chokers? <laughs> Pain in the ass. They got a mind of their own, don't they? A bundle of choker cables are sent back with the helicopter to one of the staging areas for reuse. Then the Vertol helicopter quickly grabs another log. When 
lifted, these logs are as tall as a six-story building. Large pink and blue flags are placed on the ground or the creek bed to tell the pilot where to place each end of the log. On this turn, three 40-foot saw logs are grabbed. On each helicopter, hemispherical windows on both sides are vital to allow the pilot and co-pilot to see what's going on down below. By the third day, all is proceeding according to schedule, and now it's time for the large Chinook to lift the remaining 63 logs that are too heavy for the Vertol helicopter. With a payload capacity of about 24,000 pounds, it can lift any of the logs on this project, the largest being close to 20,000 pounds. Instead of choker cables, a large electrically operated grapple is used with the Chinook. Most logs are Douglas fir, although a few are western hemlock and western red cedar. At some of the log jam sites, a few red alders may have been felled into the creek to allow the pilots to better view ground conditions, and these alders were also integrated into the log jams. The Chinook helicopter, being a much larger machine, requires more frequent refueling. Note the double tanker truck that's required. The pilots are extremely adept with these helicopters. Note how they can hover 250 feet above the ground and manipulate both the grapple and each log to more efficiently pick up two large logs simultaneously. There is an old adage in stream conservation. One strives to maintain or create streams that are cool, clean, connected, and complex. For this watershed, the first two are easily achieved. Third goal, connected, also exists, as there are no barriers to fish passage as previously presented. The last term, complex, is what we are laying the groundwork for in this project, to create complex flows within this creek, which begins by constructing the large wood jams to force the water over, under, and around these structures to create pools, alcoves, side channels, gravel deposition areas, and hyperreg zones or areas with subsurface flow, among other attributes. We are on our way. The following sequence provides before and after photos from similar vantage points of three of the 31 log jams within the North Fork Eagle Creek. Things have changed for the better in both creeks. Pools are already forming. When flows are up in the winter months, changes should begin to occur in both gravel and debris retention. Log jams may become buoyant in very high waters, but should move very little downstream. Given the large sizes of the logs used, they should provide excellent fish habitat for several decades. In this example, we see how a large moss-covered boulder is used to help restrain from downstream movement a new log jam, and just upstream, a small, naturally formed log jam exists, created by a pair of bank-side fallen Douglas fir trees and is retaining additional down wood that has floated downstream. What are the long-term expectations for these log jams? This jam, placed by helicopter in 2002 and located about one mile upstream, is the only other man-made jam in the North Fork Eagle Creek. It continues to function well 22 years later, retaining gravels and other debris while creating a complex flow regime around and within it. It has been a haven for steelhead and coho fry. The goal of this project is to naturally rebuild the salmon and steelhead populations within this watershed. As can be seen in this newspaper article from 1907, over 11,000 adult steelhead ascended Eagle Creek, the majority of which would have spawned in the North Fork Eagle since it has more habitat. And 1907 was apparently an off year due to low water. 
Today, less than 10% of that number ascend to spawn in the Eagle Creek watershed annually. We hope to change that for the better. To learn more about these projects, please visit the Natural History Kiosk at Eagle Fern Park, one of our county's most beautiful parks, and take a nice walk or hike to enjoy the mature forest stands in the area. Consider perusing the Friends of the Eagle Creek Watershed website and the QR code to access it noted on this slide, which has much more information about many aspects of this watershed. About 14% of the funds and in-kind contributions received went towards fuel reduction efforts within nearby properties. This map shows the relationship between the fish habitat enhancement reaches, denoted by the thick blue lines, and the total area of properties treated since 2022. The aim was to extend a much larger Oregon Department of Forestry funded fuels reduction project completed in 2022 to further reduce the risk of wildfire hazards that could threaten the nearby rural communities, as well as this fish habitat restoration work. Now, about a five mile swath of treated lands exists. Over 400 acres of the highest hazard stands across 10 public and private ownerships have now been treated. A combination of techniques was used, including pre-commercial thinning of larger trees, masticating of the smaller trees, pruning limbs up to at least eight feet to minimize ladder fuels, chipping of old slash piles, and invasive plant species control followed by native species replanting. A portion of the trees harvested from the pre-commercial thinning were donated by the contractor to the Estacada Area Food Bank for use as firewood by those in need. The following organizations, families, and individuals were involved in this project, and it would have been very difficult, if not impossible, to have had such a successful project without their help, perseverance, creativity, and generosity. All their contributions are greatly appreciated. And what was the cost of this project? About $1.69 million, of which $1.45 million was for fish habitat restoration and about $240,000 for fuels reduction work. Funding was primarily through grants, as identified in the previous slide, and community in-kind contributions of materials, property use, and labor. It's a win-win for both the community and aquatic life. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it.